In this video, I'm going to show you how to program this style Dish Network remote control to your hopper and your TV and other devices. Coming up next. Hey everybody, Rudy here from Take a Bath Productions with another video helping you save time and money fixing various things through how-to videos. Today we're working with this Dish Network 54.0 remote control. It goes to your hopper. I'm also going to be working with this 40.0 remote control. I'm going to show you how to program either one or both. Uh, they're both pretty similar as far as the program processing goes and I think there's even a couple of other Dish Network remotes that work with the hopper as well and those are going to be a similar procedure too. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Alright, welcome back. Stay tuned towards the end of the video and I'll show you a free workaround for a second TV using no Joey and it's perfectly fine with Dish Network. Okay, I'm going to start off with this uh, 54.0. It's already programmed to the, uh, to the box, uh, but if you want to switch remotes or something like that, you're going to have to unpair this. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that real quick before I show you how to program the TV. Uh, all I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the video and then come back. I'm going to flip down the front panel of the hopper and push the sysinfo button, and then I'll uh, come right back. Okay, on the sysinfo screen here, as you can see on the right-hand side, it says um, remote and the uh, remote information there. Just click unpair, just like that. And then I'm going to pair this other one just so you can see how it's done. Just push the sat button up here, just like that. And there we go, it's paired. All right, so if you want to program the TV, um, all you're going to have to do is push this menu button right over here. Scroll down to settings. I'm using these arrow buttons here to, to scroll, and then the middle button is to select. Push select, and go over to remote control. TV. We want to pair the TV. Go to TV Pairing Wizard. If you don't find your TV listed under this step, you can go here to teach commands as long as you have the original TV remote and uh, teach this remote how to do that. But um, we think it will work by using the TV Pairing Wizard. All right, we'll just scroll down here to S. I got a Samsung. All right, uh, this is the first code. It says a 58 there. So there's 58 different codes, but what you're going to do, try the volume. Okay, volume's working, so that's fine. If that didn't work, you would go over here to try next code and then select that and then it'll try the next code and then so forth and so on. If you run out of 58 codes, then try to teach the remote and if that doesn't work, then it's not gonna work. All right, I'm gonna click finished. All right, it programmed. Now if you wanted to uh, program a DVD player, for example, same thing, you just scroll down here to DVD, and um, if you uh, have a popular brand, you can go here, let's see if they have a Sony, there you go, wait. There it is. 
So that's all you got to do on that, and it uh, it's the same thing. If it doesn't work on the first code, just try to try the next code and keep on doing that. There you go. There's that screen again. 54 different codes, and then again, try next code, try next code until it works. Or you can search for model. Uh, same thing on the TV. But I'm just going to say that that's going to work because I don't have a Sony DVD. I'm just showing you how to do it. All right, that's it. This auxiliary device here is for an amplifier, and I'm going to go ahead and put this in there because I want to show you something after this is in. Uh, so audio amplifier. Same thing. You can teach commands on all these um, if, you, if you can't get it to work. I have a Pioneer amplifier. All right, there we go. There's only four possibilities on this one. Uh, you get the idea on the try next code thing, so I'm going to go ahead and push finished. There we go. Uh, the reason I wanted to show you that is if you go down here to the customizations, volume, and control buttons. Right now it's set to control TV volume. That's kind of the way I'm going to keep it. But if you wanted it, there you go, control auxiliary device and that is my Pioneer so if you run the volume up and down it's going to control the, uh, the uh, volume of the amplifier and leave the TV alone but I'm going to put it back to TV because I don't actually have an amplifier in this uh, room here alright that's it that's how you program a remote for a hopper um, this works on several different uh, styles remotes that come with the hopper um, it's in the menu system now instead of pushing this until the light comes on and then entering the code and going through all that, which was fine. Um, but I think it is a little bit easier to go into the menu like that. You don't have to worry about finding your code book or if you don't have your code book, you got to look it up online and all that garbage. Um, but if you want to uh, see my little workaround, hang tight there for a minute. I'm going to switch cameras. Um, mainly this is for you Apple users out there. Uh, you're going to need an Apple TV and an iPad or, or an iPhone to make this work, but um, hang on and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, yeah, this is my little workaround. Uh, you know, the only reason I'm doing this is because they want $7 for the Joey receiver, and uh, I'm a cheap bastard, so I have I heard that uh, Dish Anywhere you can watch live TV on and watch your DVR recordings and all that stuff from anywhere, so I wondered, well... Can I use AirPlay with Dish Anywhere? And yes, you can. Um, just click go into the app. Now, I'm not saying this won't work with Android. Uh, you might be able to stream it to Roku this way. I haven't tried that. Uh, so this is really for you Apple users out there, and I know there's a lot of you uh, that would probably want to use this. Or even if you have a second receiver, you might need a third receiver somewhere, and this might be a viable option for you. All right, so here's my recordings on the uh, DVR. Uh, if you want to go to your uh, guide and just select whatever you want to watch, we'll just pick one. doesn't matter what it is, just for the purposes of the video. And just click on the video and push this little icon right here. There we go. And select that. And... There we go. It shows up on the TV. All right, so that's all you got to do. And uh, you pause and all that stuff works right there. Pause, rewind, fast forward. You can record from here. And you can also watch your uh, recordings on your DVR. So you can pretty much do anything that you could have done with a dish box. Uh, so this works, and it saves $7 a month. It's a little bit extra trouble, but $7 a month is a lot of money. If you enjoyed this video, Click on that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Thanks for watching.